Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome back to another video. So today's video is a continuation of the previous mini lesson where I, you know, showed you guys how I will be journaling using Notion and I gave you guys a template, of course. I didn't tell you you have to use the exact template. You can change things around, but you know, I just gave you guys what I personally think you should be putting on there. So now this is going to be a similar video, but this time we're going to talk about data collection and backtesting, right? So let's start with the very basics. Now let's think back a few lessons, right? We done a weekly profile lesson. We done a daily profile lesson. We've done an ADR lesson, right? These are three big data points. With these data points, there's a lot of things to collect, right? The ADR, very simplistic one. How many pips do we move in a day? Using the previous five days, we build a five ADR, you know, take on to the next day. Cool. We can then, you know, collect that data for an extended period of time and start to build an average amount of pips that price will move. Right. So cool. The weekly profile, fairly easy, you know, bullish bearish week. What day is price making the high low? Same thing with the daily profile. Fairly straightforward, right? When is price making the high low? And of course the ADR is already accounted for. Now cool, that's that's all nice to back test. You know, it's a it's a good test, especially for some of you who might be beginners, you know, to visualize data, to bring it together and you know just just something that a lot of people should do, not only to see the data and the results, but you know, get to grips with the charts, see how price is forming, what happened in the past and you know where price has actually come from because if someone starts trading EU today, they haven't looked at the charts from six, seven months ago. I'm not saying it's necessary, but you know, it won't hurt you to go back there, back test a few things, get to grips with it. Now, let's get to what's actually in front of us right now, right? So I've made this spreadsheet. Now, you guys are welcome. First of all, you have a bunch of data that's already been, you know, collected for you and you can, of course, copy, right? But let's, let's get into where it is pretty straightforward month what day it is right this is this is gonna matter the date of course of the month the daily range the daily close you know was it a bullish or bearish day toh is time of high right what time was the high of the day put in i've been calculating to the minute right so this is an issue that people experience when they're back to you can't go back on the one minute time frame very far you can only go back for a certain period of time, a certain amount of candles. Now, you know, we don't have to be pinpointing. We, I could have used a five minute chart, whatever. But when it's available, why not? Right. All of you watching this video, if you watch this video as it comes out, you should be able to go back on the one minute chart all the way back to the start of the year, the first trading day, which was which was January the 2nd, the Monday. And you should be able to see on the one minute chart on EU specific when the uh, high of the day and the low of the day was put in and likely will be the same on dxy of course this is the session of the high this is the session of the low this is the daily range time so what do i mean by that the daily range was what 49.9 pips how long did it take us to go from high to low 16 hours 45 minutes what was the daily profile this one you may have some questions about expansion expansion consolidated expansion reversal right how did I come to these conclusions? Well, this is why we have the next box. The weekly close. Let the week close, right? On the weekend, which is when I would recommend you guys to do this, go back to, you know, the previous week that's passed. If your week has closed bullish, what would these days mean, right? So this week closed bearish. So if Monday was a bearish day, Tuesday was a bearish day, and your week's closing bearish, what does that mean? Expansion, expansion, right? consolidated because this pretty much just went sideways went back into the range a bit expansion again and then friday offered a large reversal due to nfp right so these answers were calculated on the basis of how the week closed and of course going back on the charts and looking at it you know from perhaps a 15 minute time frame and it's very easy to see what each day done if you split them up cool over here i've made a little section for comments you know for example Already, this this day is an outlier, 166 pips. Okay, um, this day as well, right? But let me add 
that Monday was a bank holiday. So typically the day after the bank holiday, we expect this day to deliver the liquidity of this day and the previous day, right? Makes sense. So now when I look at my data and I'm like, okay, wait, why is this a bit of an anomaly? Makes sense. The previous day is a bank holiday. So we've delivered the liquidity of the previous day and the current day. Now this day again, why is this a bit of an anomaly? 166 bits I've written, you know, it's NFP, right? It was a reversal back into the weekly range. Just so I'm aware when I do have, you know, these jumps in data, because why are we collecting this data, right? So let's get onto that. All of this data means something and it's showing you something. Now here's, here's something interesting I already spotted. In this, right, of course, some of the answers are very far off. The data set is very small here. There's already one time that's shown up more than others. Six hours. It's taken us six hours to deliver liquidity, usually once we've made one end of the range. The algorithm knows when the end of the range is made, by the way, right? It's pre-programmed in. Now, what does that mean? Now, let's imagine I collect this whole data for a month, even, right? 31 days you know to me that's not enough it should be more but let's just say it's a month we can then build an average and imagine our most common answer is six hours right that's appearing again and again and again we then start to assume okay the probability of once the law of the day has been made and we're confident that it's the law of the day we have roughly a six hour window to get into trades get in line with it before the half the day is made and when you then start combining these things with the ADR, with liquidity pools, you know, with a bit of logic, things start to become very clear because it can be like, okay, look, price is somewhere here. We have six hours to make it up here. Okay, cool. London kill zone just ended. We've come up to here. We've started to retrace. That makes a lot of sense for New York to come down here and then up there. Hope you guys caught, um, kept up with the boxes there. But, um, I hope you get the gist of it. All this data does serve a purpose. Now, me telling you guys go back, you know, do your back tests in those lessons, that's good. And I hope everyone done that. Now, this in itself is a form of back testing to an extent, you know, if you're doing it on the weekend, you're looking back at the past week. But in a way, also forward testing because we're going to be using this data very actively. Another easy one, right? Very easy. Like I said, you know, DR time, it can vary. The session. Once we have again a large data set, right? Let's say we fill in all of this and we have answers here, we can then say, oh look, 70% of the time, the low of the day on a bearish day, bullish day, whatever, is made on or made in, sorry, London Open Kills or whatever it is, whatever the answers will be, the answers will reveal themselves. Some little things I quickly had to touch on. AL means Asia launch, right? I've included that because that's that window between um, the Asia range and London actually starting to our window. Um, LL is London lunch, London open kill zone, New York kill zone. AR is the Asia range itself and the London close kill zone, London open kill zone, right? Now, if we, you know, on Excel, not everyone might know how to use it. This is this stuff that I've set up is pretty straightforward. I'm hoping all of you can set this up. I will be nice and send you guys, you know, this data in the bootcamp. I am not collecting this data for you. I'm not doing it for you. Every week and I expect you to take some time out when you do your weekly outlook, take your time out, go over the past week, look at your calendar, include your comments and notes and collect all this data the same way I've done. It'll be very fruitful to you. Another easy, you know, little hack here, I guess, the ADR, you can pre-calculate it here. You know, even when I highlight these numbers, the average down here is 119. So imagine I'm calculating the ADR for the next day. Of course, I haven't done Tuesday, today's ADR, but let's assume I wanted to calculate the ADR for Tuesday. I can highlight five days and my average is then 133. So you know, I already know my expected ADR is gonna be 133. Just a little hack. Now, in regards to this data, the way we can filter this, Right. Gone. Yeah, so if we just come over here, we can press filter. And as you guys can see, these little tick boxes pulled up next to everything. So what I can do to this, right? So, you know, we've got uh, bearish and bullish days. What I can do to this, 
to this data is just change it to one of them, right? There's no, there shouldn't be, you know, any blanks in your data once everything is filled in. Of course, everything's not filled in for me. Now, let's say I only want to look at the bearish days. You see how we can see this data now. Okay, three bearish days and in those bearish days, twice London open kill zone made, you know, the high. The Oh, sorry, it was the session of the high, yeah. The same way, we can come over to the bullish and the bullish days are going to show something as well. You know, London open kill zone made the low of the day on the bullish days twice already, right? Cool. That's just three days. I've collected this data for six days into the year properly. You know, of course, there's been six trading days. We're on the seventh right now. And what you guys want to do is collect this data consistently. The more data you collect, the more conclusions you can draw. And the longer you collect this data, the more accurate they will get as you will work towards average figures that make, you know, a lot more sense over time. Using this small data set to start making conclusions to me is very useless. You need to collect at least a few months. And doing it this way, doing it now as time goes along is very easy versus doing it in, you know, backtest in sense. If I tell you guys, oh, go backtest all of 2022, that will take you a lot longer than taking out five, 10 minutes of your weekend, every weekend and collecting these small bits of data. You know, this shouldn't take you very long. Maybe the first time you're making your spreadsheet, setting things up, yeah, it might be a bit long, right? That's fine. I have to do it as well. But after you do it a couple of times, you know, it will become very easy. Now, so this, bear in mind, is one spreadsheet. This is for my daily data. I've explained everything I'm looking at, right? Same way, make comments, everything. Everything here should now make sense to you guys. We can then look at the weekly data. So very similar, nothing crazy. We've got the month, we've got the week. The weekly range again, from the high to the low, how many pips we had. The weekly close, right? And my bias is bearish. The high the week's made on a Monday. The low of the week's made on a Friday. The high, what session was it made during? London Open Kill Zone. The low, what session was it made during? The time from the high to the low, right? I've been very specific here. I understand if you guys don't want to be as specific, you can just do days and hours, whatever's fine. This data doesn't, you know, you guys don't have to copy me exactly. It doesn't have to be like that. You can tailor this data to what you think is important. I've put in some things that I think are very easy to draw conclusions from and will aid mine and your trading in the future. You can add more things if you want, if you want to be more specific, but it also makes sense if you don't, you know, include a few things, it's fine. And of course, the last thing I've included here is the monthly close, similar to this one where I've included a weekly close, right? And the principle is pretty much the same. It's not very hard. The weekly range, you know, very easy to see when you're on the weekend, you're just analyzing one candle. This time is easy to work out as well. If anything, you can use this daily data sheet to aid your weekly data sheet. Um, this might be overkill to a few of you in it, like doing both things, but in my eyes it is very helpful. And as you use, you know, as you collect this data, it will serve a purpose. Um, this data that I'm collecting is for EURUSD. Some of you may not trade EURUSD. I know a lot of people trade US 500 in here. I have a friend, you know, he's in the group chat actually. Um, and he's collected very similar data for US 500 for, I believe, all of 2022. So if that's the pay you're trading, collect the data for US 500. That's fine. It doesn't have to be EURUSD. I'm not telling you to do this task, you know, as practice. Yes, it is good practice. But I'm telling you to do it because it will serve you a purpose later on. So pick the pair that you will be trading. Do more than one pair if you want to. If you trade EURUSD and US500, do both. It's not going to take you a lot of time, honestly, if you start now. Especially because we're only a few days into the year. So, you know, do either. Any questions, you know, even questions on should I be backtesting this, that? Should I be collecting this sort of day or not? Whatever. You know, you guys can hit me up. I'll be happy to help. That is it for today's video. I'll be back with a lesson very soon.